Herculaneum, was buried deep. By the time the last pyroclastic surge roared down from Vesuvius and died hissing on the sea, the houses and shops were entombed beneath up to 80 feet, 25 meters, of hardened volcanic debris. So, when the city was rediscovered in the early 18th century, it was not excavated. Instead, it was mined, with narrow tunnels burrowed through black rock along the lines of walls and streets. In 1750, the accidental discovery of a beautiful marble floor led the diggers of Herculaneum to a spectacular Roman villa just outside the city. As the tunnels lengthened, it became clear that the building was enormous, with a facade extending at least 800 feet, 240 meters, along the ancient coastline. The grandeur of the building can be appreciated at the Getty Villa in Los Angeles, which replicates its plan. Pictured here, for example, is a Getty's reconstruction of the villa's garden peristyle, 330 feet long and centered on a fish pond the length of an Olympic swimming pool. Even more impressive than the sheer size of the villa were the more than 90 busts and statues discovered inside, almost all of exceptional quality, like this portrait of Athena. Other highlights include this statue of Hermes at rest, and this bust, likely of Dionysus. The villa contained more than a dozen portraits of Hellenistic kings, including this lively one of Ptolemy Appian. And, most majestic of all, this statue of a leaping piglet. The true treasures of the villa, however, only came to light after two years of tunneling, when the workmen began to encounter lumps of what appeared to be charcoal. Only gradually, and after many had been discarded, were these lumps identified as papyrus scrolls, carbonized by the heat of the volcanic debris. Some scrolls were discovered in the charred remains of a cabinet, and others in three carrying cases. The vast majority, however, were found in a small room lined with wooden shelves. Over the course of two years, about 1,000 scrolls, many in pieces, were recovered from the villa. The excitement surrounding their discovery turned to frustration as it became clear how difficult it would be to read the blackened and brittle papyri. Initial attempts to open the scrolls involved chopping them in half lengthwise and peeling back the layers from inside. As might be imagined, this succeeded only in destroying many of them. Fortunately, after a few years of such butchery, the scrolls were given into the charge of Father Antonio Piaggio, a scholar from the Vatican Library who devised an ingenious machine, pictured here, to unroll the scrolls using weights on strings. Though effective, the process was painfully slow. Over 44 years of work, Piaggio managed to unroll only 17 papyri. As they began to be read, the papyri proved to be completely different from anything the scholars of Europe had expected. Before we discuss their contents, however, a few words about our sponsor. Displate produces high-quality metal posters. You can choose from millions of designs, inspired by everything from ancient Rome to the latest movies and Netflix series. And when your posters arrive, you can mount them quickly and easily with the provided magnets. Displate sent me three posters, including this shot of the Chicago skyline, and this image of the Colosseum. I appreciated the fact that I could mount both without damaging my walls or even opening a toolbox. Click on the link in the description for a special discount, applied automatically, of 25% off one or two displates and 29% off three or more. This is a limited time offer, so check out Displate today. Back to the villa. Although there were a few very fragmentary Latin texts among the carbonized scrolls, including part of a lost epic on the Battle of Actium, the vast majority were Greek philosophical treatises, almost all associated with the Epicurean school. A remarkable number were works of Philodemus of Gadara, an Epicurean philosopher and poet who lived on the Bay of Naples in the first century BC. Since at least one work was apparently a draft, scholars conjectured that the room in which most of the scrolls was found was the working library of Philodemus himself. If Philodemus indeed wrote and resided there, the villa was almost certainly built by his patron, Lucius Calpurnius Piso, father-in-law of Julius Caesar. Although both Piso and Philodemus died in the mid-first century BC, the scrolls in the library were apparently left in place for more than a hundred years, 
and were still on their musty shelves when Vesuvius erupted. Now, 19 centuries later, those scrolls remain one of the greatest puzzles in classical scholarship. New technology is gradually making them more accessible. Brent Seals and his team at the University of Kentucky, for example, are working to virtually unwrap scrolls with computed tomography. More than a third of the Herculaneum papyri, however, remain unread and unpublished. These papyri may be only the tip of the iceberg. When a small part of the villa was cleared in the 1990s, archaeologists realized that the building was much larger than previously thought, with two unexcavated levels. At the very least, these levels likely contain more papyri in cabinets and boxes. And it's probable that they conceal an even greater treasure. The library discovered in the 18th century was, as noted, highly specialized, assembled by a philosopher who died more than a century before the eruption of Vesuvius. This, in other words, was not the villa's main library, which would have contained a much wider range of Greek and Latin literature. That library, with its thousands or even tens of thousands of scrolls, must still be buried. If those books are found, and if even a small fraction can still be read, they will transform our understanding of classical life and literature on a scale not seen since the Renaissance. If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting Tolden Stone on Patreon. You might also enjoy my book, Naked Statues, Fat Gladiators, and War Elephants. Thanks for watching.